Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Monday again, and I know last Friday when I gave my quick little update, I said I was going to come back on on Saturday and do my quick start video. Well, I kind of took the weekend off. So here I am. It's Monday, and I'm here to do this quick start video to share about how to get started with homeschooling. So this is really geared toward those who are checking out homeschooling or those who find themselves with their kids at home unexpectedly and are really enjoying having their kids home and would really like to keep them home. So I'm just going to give some tips on how to get started and uh, point you in the right direction. And I do encourage all of you homeschool moms out there to share this video with those who are considering homeschooling. And um, even if people aren't considering homeschooling, but you're having conversations with them, you can give them this as a, a way of sharing some information with them. So I'm just going to get started with that. So we're quick starting our homeschooling and how that works. So first of all, one of the best things to do is get to know some homeschool families. Um, most homeschooling is pretty popular now. So I'm thinking you can probably find some families around where you are who homeschool or at least search for some folks on some groups on Facebook. I know there's some really big um, homeschool support groups out there on Facebook. You can always hook up with us on CHAP at CHAP on our CHAP webpage on the Facebook. So um, get connected with other homeschool families. Talk to them. Talk to them about what they do. Homeschool families, if you're watching, share what you do with people who are interested. Explain how your day goes. Just get some information that way. It's good to find out what other people are doing and how things work for them. Uh, another thing you want to do as you, you want to continue to get connected with other families, you also want to get connected, you might want to consider getting connected with a support group or co-op. Those are a little different. A support group is, I mean, you get together and you support each other. You give each other encouragement. You maybe do field trips, things like that. Uh, a co-op is generally more academically minded where you're getting together to teach classes to your children. Uh, so you might be really good at English, someone else might be good at math, and you swap. So someone's teaching all the kids their, their subject of choice. Uh, so that is um, one way to get connected with folks out there. And, and right now, if we were having a normal season, it would be the time to visit co-ops. But you can still get connected with co-ops online and um, around you and ask um, how registration and stuff works for next year if you're looking to join one for next year. Another way you can connect is you can connect with CHAP, chaponline.com. We also have homeschoolpennsylvania.org, which is your basic homeschooling information. That is another place you definitely want to go if you're looking to get started with homeschooling, homeschoolpennsylvania.org. And you can get connected with our events with our uh, e-news and the things and articles and other things like that in the homeschooling world. And you can also go to hslda.org. That is the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. And they are there to defend homeschoolers' rights and to support us and to help us keep our freedoms as homeschoolers. So those are ways to get connected. One of the things as you're thinking about homeschooling and getting started is what is your motivation? Why is it that you want to homeschool? Because as homeschoolers that you meet will attest, it's not uh, like cake and pie every day. <laughs> there are days, and it could be most days, that are really, really hard. So homeschoolers out there, if you're sharing this video with your friends, um, share them the realness of it. I mean, you, you know, it's great to have the kids home. It's great to teach them what you want them to learn. But some days are really hard. So the motivation for homeschooling needs to be real. It can't just be like some fluffy thing. So it has to be something that down in your core keeps you going when it's super ultra hard. That is different for everybody. So just consider your motivation and even write it down and tuck it away in a place that you can go back and look at it again and be like, okay, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this. And you can do it. Okay, and when you're having those days that are challenging, you message someone or you call someone and say, oh my word, help me today, and they can normally sympathize with you, you know? If they're not having a bad day, they had another day that was bad, so they can share with you in that way. So it's always important to be connected. We were built for connection. We were made to be in relationship, and it's no different in the homeschool world. Uh, so have your motivation ready. So that's the beginning of getting started with homeschooling. Your next step and I encouraged this in one of my other videos recently, is to know the law. If you have not personally read the homeschool law for Pennsylvania, you need to do it. It is out there on homeschoolpennsylvania.org. 
Uh, there's a link there that takes you exactly to the law and you can read it through yourself so that you understand what it means. And if you're reading through it and you don't quite understand what it's saying, ask. Ask us. You can always message us and ask what a specific thing means. Or HSLDA. HS HSLDA is a great resource. Um, if you're not a member, I encourage you to be so because you can go and ask them questions. They will support you. If there's any legal issues ever with homeschooling, they are there to support you and they are the ones to give you the legal answers um, so that you know that you're following the law. But read the law. That's a big thing. So if you are thinking, you know, you have your kids home. I know there's some folks who have their kids home and the learning's all online. And I know some moms don't like that, especially for younger children. And you're thinking, man, I just I just want to have my kids at home. I just want to homeschool, even if it's just for the remainder of this school year because of the situation we find ourselves in. Or if you want to continue it next year. If you want to do it, if you want to homeschool right now, you need to file an affidavit with your school district. Now, the trick right now is finding a notary that is open. Maybe you know somebody. I don't know. But um, you can file an affidavit. It's a special circumstance right now. Um, and we can talk to HSLDA about the whole notary part. But in order to be homeschooling your kid for the rest of the school year, you would need to file an affidavit. And everyone who homeschools needs to file an affidavit annually. So there are samples of that on homeschoolpennsylvania.org. A really good one. I actually use the one that's on there for myself that covers everything that needs to be included. Now the law explains what should be in the affidavit. And our sample affidavit has all those things in it. It covers what you should teach them, um, the laws about safety, and if um, you've been convicted of a crime, those type of things, the health, the medical, the dental, uh, and immunizations. All that information is included on the affidavit. And really what it's telling the school district is like, hey, I'm planning on homeschooling. These are the children I'm homeschooling. Now on the affidavit, you only have to, have to list children who are six years old and older. It used to be eight, that changed for the coming school year. So at this point, it's six years old. Actually for this school year, so if you are crisis schooling and you've chosen to homeschool, it's only eight and older for the rest of this school year. So it's a little tricky. But starting this summer by August 1st, if you're gonna homeschool for 2020 to 2021, Everyone with a six-year-old or older needs to file an affidavit. We are working on having that changed, but with all this craziness that's happening, it's slowed down a little bit. So uh, we will keep you up to date with that particular thing. But so for right now, if you're crisis schooling and you're like, I want to homeschool for the rest of the school year, only if your ch children are eight years old or older do you need to file an affidavit. If you decide you want to keep them home for the next school year, six years old and older, are the kids that all need to be filed under your affidavit. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. If it's confusing, please message us. So you need an affidavit and objectives. Uh, there's also sample objectives online at homeschoolpennsylvania.org. Again, I'm gonna say that constantly. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail about that. There's videos on the, out there that you can look. We have a sample out there that I actually use every single year for my kids, the same one again and again. Um, so Dee and I talk about that on Chatting with Chat. It is out there for you to watch uh, at a different time. You also are supposed to file immunization records um, or exemption, if you choose exemption to vaccinations. And it says medical, uh, the affidavit that CHAP has out there says I'm keeping up with the medical and dental care. So I actually don't file the actual reports from the doctors. I keep them on file at home. Uh, because if my affidavit says I'm keeping up with it and I sign that and that means I'm keeping up with it You know a, a parent's gonna take their child to the doctor and make sure Everything's going well. Well, that's what you're doing. So you don't have to give those papers into the school district uh, But you need to have them on file at home Should you need to provide that information? But the affidavit says I'm doing it you sign it. It's notarized. That's what you need to do so uh, make sure, and I know there's been a lot of questions about that with that. I can't get into my doctor and that's okay. When you can, you go and, and it'll be all right. Everyone's in the same boat with that right now. So if you choose to homeschool for the rest of this particular school year, eight years old and older, you need an affidavit. You need some objectives. It means what are you going to teach? What are you going to work on? And they can be generic. Check out the sample online. Okay. And then just keep your records at home to be sure that um, you have all that medical stuff up to date. 
And then next year, if you choose to keep your kids home, it's six years old and older on your affidavit objectives. Keep up with your medical records and file the immunization, um, proof of immunization or your exemption papers. Okay, so that's the law part of getting started with homeschooling. Uh, the next part is you want to keep a list of all the books that you, that you have used. It's called a log. Okay, so all the books that you, if you read um, books online, on your Kindle, if you use audiobooks, magazines, everything, videos, everything you use as an educational resource, you write on a list, and that is called the log. So if you're finishing the school year, next year, whatever, your log con contains all of the resources that you use. And some of us use a lot of resources because we go to the library so you have these big long lists and that's great. So that is your log. Along with that, we keep um, record of the 180 days. Now that's been waived for the 2019-2020 year um, because of coronavirus. But for 2020 to 2021, you will need a log that shows your 180 days of school. So I generally just print out a calendar and check off the days that we do till I have 180. So again, if you're quick starting for this year, you don't need 180 uh, days, but keep a list, a log of the books that you've used. It's a good habit to get into. But in the future, in a normal year, log 180 days, okay? So then the next thing, that is all of your law-related items. Okay, so that's what you got to do. And then as you go along, this year we don't need evaluations. Um, so this, since this is a quick start video, I'm not going to go over how to wrap up the year. That is, in, that is also on homeschoolpennsylvania.org. Dee and I did a lot of videos on the evaluations, on keeping a portfolio, all those things. You can go watch all those videos. This is a quick start guide, so I'm just trying to get you up and running. So the next thing that we look into is curriculum. So some people get really excited about this and some people go, oh my word, I don't know what to do. So really, as you're home with your kids, we've talked about this on Chat with Chap earlier. You have your children at home. Take some time to get to know them. How do they learn? Do they like to listen to things? Do they like to see things? Do they like to play with their hands? What is the way that your child learns? And I know when we don't spend a lot of time with our children or we're busy with other things, sometimes we don't really know. I mean, those of us, even if we pick a curriculum and say, well, let's just do this because I feel comfortable teaching it this way, it might really not be the way that my child learns the best. So um, take some time getting to know how your child learns and then see what you can find out there. The people you connected with, I said, on step one, Go ask those people, what did you use? My kid likes to do visual stuff. What did you use for this? Or I'm looking for this type of curriculum. Can you give me a suggestion? If you post something like that on those Facebook groups out there, oh, you'll get all kinds of answers. Or, you know, your your personal friends group in those groups. We are very happy to share and give suggestions because, you know, we have all had to figure it out. And we've taken a lot of time supporting each other and having discussions on it. Uh, our co-op and the mom's room, we have a break room. And there's all kinds of conversations about curriculum and um, uh, testing and evaluators and everything. We have lots of discussions in there. So you really want to connect with people and ask what's worked for them. And maybe you'll try it. And it really won't. And then you'll just look for something else. Another thing to do is to come to convention. That's a different thing completely. Um, then we will keep you up uh, up to date about that with chat because we are planning on having it. Um, and we will release the date when we know for sure. But um, it is good to get connected with people and get suggestions from others about curriculum. So um, like I said earlier, you figure out how your child learns. But you have to figure out how you teach. And it could be totally different. How are you comfortable teaching? How do they learn the best? And you kind of have to weave this together into your own little personal homeschool plan. So if you're looking to get started with homeschooling, it does take a lot of shifting and deciding and re-examining and stuff like that. So don't think you're going to pick something and be like, all right, we've got it. We're good to go because there's always changes that happen. So don't be shocked if that happens and you're getting started. But it's good to start with something. You can buy curriculum um, there's lots of options, um, CBD, Christian book distributors, 
um, is a great resource for homeschooling stuff. Uh, you can also go, there's Easy Peasy Online Homeschool. They do elementary and high school, and it's free. So that one's super cool if you want to finish the year, but you don't want to spend a lot of money because you're not quite sure if you'll do it next year. Check out free online resources like this. And there's other things that are really, I mean, there's lots of free stuff out there right now just because of where we are at as a country right now. So check out those free resources and use them as your curriculum and see what your kid responds to the best. How, what are your, how does your children, your child learn the best? Ask them questions. Well, what did you think about this? Or what did you learn about this? And have them talk to you about it. And then that's going to give you clues as to how they take in information the best. Like if they read a book and they can answer all your questions about it and they loved it and they devoured the book, well then maybe they're visual or they like to have this in their hands. So uh, just spending time with your children and, and learning how they learn. So that's the curriculum part. Lots of suggestions online for that type of thing. So you can do a little bit of research. And then after that, you kind of have to think about where are we going to do this homeschooling stuff. Now, at first, I only had two kids when I started homeschooling, so we did everything at the kitchen table. That's where it happened. I had the books over on the side. Well, now I have six, and they're all over the house. So some are in the living room, some are in the kitchen, some are in the side room, some are in their bedrooms. It's They've kind of spread out to where they like to be. As they get older, they know where they're comfortable learning, and they gravitate to that spot. So if you have small children, you as mom, you get to pick that spot and let's let's do this. And if it's not working and you need to try a different room, do that. But think about it. Um, it might be good to set up a particular place to have all of your things and all of your supplies. And homeschool moms out there, if you're watching, please chime in with what you do because any uh, person who's considering homeschooling will, be, will benefit from suggestions on any of these things I'm talking about. So please feel free to comment. I would love to have everyone's comments on this. So, um, and there's another part of it, too, is when are you going to homeschool? I know we all think, well, we'll get up in the morning and by 8.30 or 9 or 10, we'll start homeschooling and it'll go until, you know, 2 or 3, which sounds kind of similar to the public school system schedule, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. That's the beauty of homeschooling. I have a close friend whose husband, for years, so he would leave around 2.00. And come home late, you know, at 11. So their family time was in the morning. And their family meal, their large family meal, was at lunch. And then when he went off to work, then they spent the afternoon doing their homeschooling. And the kids were in bed till he got home. So that was a really great way to shift around your schedule and still have time together with dad and build your family relationships. So there is all that wonderful flexibility. So like if you're working a part-time job, and it has these particular hours, well, then you homeschool at different times. Sometimes people homeschool in the evening. And when you have really young kids, you can get it all done in the evening in an hour or two. It changes as children get older, but then they're older, and they can handle doing some of the work on their own. So it does change as your children change and as you change, and everyone's used to what's expected of them and that sort of thing. But spend some time thinking about where and when you would like to do your homeschool day. Okay, and then after that, just enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the freedom. This doesn't have to look like the school we knew growing up. It can, but it doesn't have to. And you can do naturey things in your yard, look for bugs. You know, you can, like I said, read at night, do stuff in the afternoon. Uh, I used to put the little ones to sleep and then do read alouds when the little ones were sleeping so everyone could focus on what was going on and there wasn't a toddler running around pulling books off the shelf. So, um, you just shift it around and make it work for your family. It doesn't have to be some structured, this is what it's always looked like, this is what it's got to be. Make it yours, and that's the beauty of the freedom of homeschooling. So lots of curriculum options, lots of time and setup options. Please, homeschoolers out there, if you want to encourage those who are considering homeschooling, um, share your comments on this video. Uh, share this video. I would like to have this go out to lots of folks who are considering homeschooling or at least maybe for the end of this in the crisis situation to know how they could do some homeschooling to the end of the school year if they're not enjoying the online learning from um, the their schools that they were attending. I want to give them the resources that they need in order to homeschool. So this is your quick start guide. If you have questions, please comment below or write into CHAP. We do have this quick start guide on our website at chaponline.com. 
So if you go there on your phone, there's a little button that says, take me to the quick start guide. So you can direct people there. And it has all the stuff I just talked about is written up in a nice little document. It has links to homeschool.org. You can check it all out. So all the information is there. I also wanted to let you guys know who have been watching the videos lately that there is a COVID-19 specific menu item. If you click on the three bars there on your on your phone on chaponline.com, there's a COVID-19 menu item. And under that has our FAQ, it has the law stuff. Everything that's on there that I've been sharing over the past week or so is there in document form. So you can, you can uh, refer back to it again and again, and you can share it with others who may not have seen it yet. So this has been the Quick Start Guide to Homeschooling. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing this video and getting it into the hands of people who are really considering homeschooling, even if it's just for the rest of the school year or maybe into the following school year. If you're considering homeschooling, we welcome you aboard. And I'm telling you, if you know any homeschoolers, they're going to be happy to support you and talk to you and share with you what's worked and what hasn't worked for them. It may or may not work for you, but that's part of it. It's just figuring it out for your family. And it's beautiful. And it's just a wonderful way to do learning. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you, everybody. And we'll look for you on Wednesday at Chatting with Chap. Okay, bye-bye.